Hello everyone. In the last video, we have seen sources which provide evidence for evolution, which proves that the complex organs have been selected for the advantages they provide. But how these complex organs can be generated by a single change in the DNA? Surely, complex organs must have been created bit by bit over generations, or we can say that their formation is a gradual process and will take millions of years to happen. So, in this video, we are going to see how evolution takes place in stages and how different varieties of cabbage that we see are actually a result of evolution by artificial selection. First, let's see some examples of evolution by stages. If you look at the structure of the eye, it is a very complex organ and is an important organ in all the animals as well. But could such a complex organ be developed by a single change in DNA? Such an organ must have been created in stages over many generations. We had learned about regeneration in planaria. If you look at this planaria, you will find some eye-like structure at the top. These eye-like structure are nothing just eye spots which detect light. Even these rudimentary eyes provide survival advantage to the planaria. Starting from the very basic, more and more complex eye structures are developed in various organisms and have reached the stage at which we see them today. The development of eyes gave a very good survival advantage to all the organisms and you might have observed eyes in various organisms like insects, octopus, invertebrates, all of them have eyes. So evolution of eyes is an example of evolution by stages. Now let's see another example which is evolution of feathers. Feathers were evolved in some of the dinosaurs to provide insulation to their bodies in cold weather but later on these feathers got modified into a more useful purpose which was flying and the species evolved from dinosaurs to birds. So in birds it served two purposes. First was to provide insulation and the second was to fly. So it may be possible that some of the evolutionary changes in an organism for one purpose become more useful for an entirely different function on later stage. In this case, the feathers were first evolved for the insulation purpose, but later on they were more modified for an entirely different function which was flying. In the case of dinosaurs which had feathers which were used for insulation and they are related to reptiles. So we can say that the birds which had feathers are closely related to reptiles. In other words, we can say that the birds have evolved from the reptiles. In our last video, we had learned about the homologous and analogous organs and have seen that very dissimilar looking structures have evolved from common ancestral design. But this was all guess about what had happened in the history. Are there any current examples that show that such kind of evolution can happen? We are now going to see the example where a new organism can be created from the very same basic design of the ancestor. The wild cabbage plant, which is used as a food plant for, by the human beings, is an example where new species have been created from the existing one by the process of evolution. The only difference is that we are using artificial selection instead of natural selection. The farmers have been cultivating wild cabbage as a food plant for over thousands of years and by artificial selection, they have generated variety of species like cabbage, red cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, kohlrabi and kale. Some farmers wanted very less space between the leaves of the wild cabbage so they bred it that way and we got the cabbage that we eat. Some farmers wanted very less space between the leaves and also a color change so they bred the red cabbage. Now another method which was used was arrested flower development. In arrested flower development, the development of the flower is stopped in the midway. So we got another variety which we all like is broccoli. Sterile flowers are the one which for some reasons are not pollinated or fertilized. So some farmers went on for the sterile flowers and gave rise to a variety called cauliflower. Some farmers chose the swollen part of the wild cabbage and they came up with the kohlrabi while the other farmers chose the larger leaves of the wild cabbage and gave rise to another variety called as kale. So all these varieties of this vegetable had a common ancestor, wild cabbage, 
and we would have not thought about that they have descended the common ancestor if we have not learned about the process of evolution. So in this video, we have seen that evolution is not a, is not a spontaneous process, rather it occurs in many stages and it takes a longer period of time to show some changes.